Hey, you about to finish your shift? I have something to discuss, Brett said, as soon as I dropped the last chart on the counter. The animal clinic was winding down for the night, and I was more than ready to head home. I glanced at him, wiping my hands on my scrubs. Sounds good, but how about takeout at my place? I'm beat from work. Sure, got your keys? I'll grab dinner from the mall, Brett offered, already heading towards the door. All right, but fair warning, it's messy. I called after him, pulling my keys from my pocket and tossing them his way. He caught them easily, his brows furrowing. You need to clean up more regularly. Can't even have a boyfriend over with the place like this. I laughed, shaking my head. Mind your own business. Night shifts take a toll. Cleaning gets pushed aside. Well, just take out the trash more often, he replied, a teasing lilt in his voice. Rolling my eyes, I changed out of my work shoes and into some comfortable sneakers. By the time I got home, Brett was already there, bags of Chinese food spread out on the kitchen counter. So, what's this big talk about? I asked, grabbing chopsticks. He paused, looking at me seriously. There's a proposal on the table. A forkful of lo mein halfway to my mouth, I froze. Proposal? Like, business? No, Jennifer. Marriage. For me. My heart skipped a beat. Marriage? No way. With who? Megan. Megan who? I asked, though a sinking feeling told me I already knew the answer. Megan Asher. From high school. My stomach clenched. Memories of Megan immediately flooded my mind. Backhanded compliments in the hallways, cruel rumors that trashed my reputation, friendships lost because of her lies. You're kidding, right? I forced a chuckle, hoping the absurdity would dispel this nightmare. Brett shook his head, his expression unchanging. We met through a business network. She's different now. No way she's different. Brett, you can't marry Megan. She's manipulative. She tore apart my life back then. You haven't seen her in years, Jennifer. People change, Brett argued. Not Megan, I muttered, dropping my chopsticks on the table. My appetite vanished. Why her, of all people? Look, I didn't plan it this way. It just happened. I want you to give her a chance. His eyes softened, full of hope. You're asking a lot, I said, my voice cold. She made my life hell, he sighed. I know, but I need you on my side. This means a lot to me. I looked at him, my brother who had always been there for me. The conflict raged inside me, but he deserved to be happy. Fine. I'll meet with her, I said, though the bitterness lingered in my throat. Thank you, Brett said, visibly relieved. As I cleaned up the takeout containers, the impending confrontation gnawed at me. Returning to those dark memories wasn't something I wanted, but for Brett's sake I had to face Megan again. The thought of her return threatened to turn my world upside down, stirring conflict I had buried long ago. I couldn't shake the dread as I walked into the café where Brett had arranged for us to meet Megan. My stomach churned with nerves. She was already there, seated at a corner table, scrolling through her phone. Jennifer, over here! Brett waved cheerily. Taking a deep breath, I walked over, forcing a smile. Hi, Megan. She looked up, a sly grin spreading across her face. Jennifer, it's been ages. Sure has, I said, sitting down. My tone was as neutral as I could manage. Brett ordered us coffees, excitedly recounting his latest business venture as we waited. I barely heard him, my attention fixed on Megan. She seemed different, softer around the edges, but something in her eyes told me she hadn't changed at all. So how's life treating you? Megan asked, her voice dripping with false sweetness. Busy but good. The clinic keeps me on my toes, I replied, trying to keep things civil. A vet, huh? Always knew you'd end up working with animals, she said, flipping her hair back with that condescending smirk she'd perfected in high school. Yeah, well, some things never change, I shot back, unable to hide the edge in my voice. Brett frowned slightly. Come on, guys, let's keep it friendly. Megan reached out, placing a hand on Brett's arm. You're right, Brett. We're all adults here. Let's put the past behind us. I wanted to scream that the past wasn't as easily forgotten, but I held my tongue. Brett's hopeful expression was the only thing keeping me in my seat. Megan leaned closer, dropping her voice. We did have some wild times in high school, didn't we? I forced a laugh, but my mind was swirling with memories. I remembered the day she spread that rumor about me, telling everyone I had cheated on my boyfriend— he believed her, of course, and dumped me in front of half the school. Yeah, wild, I said flatly. Listen, Jennifer, Megan said, her voice suddenly serious. I know we had our differences, but I want to start fresh, for Brett's sake. I looked at Brett, 
his eyes pleading with me to give her a chance. Starting fresh sounds good, I said, though the words tasted bitter. Great, Brett said, breaking into a wide smile. See, this is going to work out. Megan nodded. I'm glad. I'd... I want us to be friends, Jen. The way she said Jen made my skin crawl. Sure, I replied, though the knot in my stomach tightened. As we drained our coffees and the conversation drifted to safer topics, I realized this meeting was just the beginning. Megan wasn't going to back down, and if she was still the same conniving person I knew, she had plans, plans that could pull Brett and the rest of my family into her web. Walking home, I couldn't help but think about all the people Megan had hurt back then. Preventing even more damage was crucial. Brett might be blind to her manipulations, but I wasn't. The battle lines were drawn, and I needed to prepare for what was to come. The weight of an old nemesis had resurfaced, and Megan's return was about to change everything. The family gathering loomed ahead with Mom and Dad eager to meet Megan. Everyone was seated around the dining table when Brett walked in with Megan in tow. Dad offered a friendly hand, while Mom clasped hers, beaming a welcoming smile. "'Nice to finally meet you, Megan. Brett has told us so much about you,' Mom said. "'All good things, I hope.' Megan replied, her polished smile firmly in place. I forced myself to join in. So, how did you two meet again? Brett jumped in. We met through a business network. We just clicked. Megan nodded. It's funny how life brings people together in unexpected ways. Mom served dinner and conversation flowed, but Megan kept steering it back to herself, recounting her fascinating breath success stories. My younger brother Kelsey listened, wide-eyed. So, Megan, what do you do now? Kelsey asked, genuinely curious. I'm a project manager at a large corporation. Keeps me busy, but I love the challenge, Megan said, flashing her perfect teeth. I bit back a retort, focusing on my plate. But not for long, Megan had turned her attention to me. Jennifer, how's the vet life treating you? Busy, but rewarding, I replied curtly. That's great. It's important to have a job that feels meaningful, even if it's not exactly glamorous, she said, her eyes gleaming with barely concealed disdain. You know Jennifer works really hard, Brett interjected. She's one of the best vets in the county. Is that so? Megan leaned back, studying me. Always knew you'd end up saving animals. It's fitting. There it was, the old condescension, the undercurrent of belittling. I clenched my fork tightly. It's a job that matters to me. Absolutely, Megan said, voice not matching her dismissive smile. Sensing the tension, Mom quickly changed the subject. Brett mentioned you're planning the wedding soon? Yes, we're looking at venues. Thought it would be nice to have it by the lake, Megan said, turning her charm back on for the parents. That sounds beautiful, Mom said, relieved. As dinner wrapped up, Megan cornered me in the kitchen. We should talk, she whispered. Privately. Reluctantly, I followed her to the back deck. The air was cool, but the conversation promised to be anything but. Look, Megan started, dropping all pretense of friendliness. I get that you don't like me. Frankly, I don't care. But this marriage is happening, so you need to deal with it. I cross my arms, narrowing my eyes. What's your game, Megan? Why, Brett? She laughed softly. No game. I just think your brother is special. Bullshit. She leaned in, her eyes cold. Watch yourself, Jennifer. You don't want to make me an enemy. I've changed, but I haven't softened. I clenched my fists, fighting the urge to lash out. You better not hurt him. That's up to you. Stay out of my way, and everything will be fine. Hearing her words, I knew this wasn't over. Megan might have everyone else fooled, but I saw through her veneer. I just hoped the family would see it, too, before it was too late. As she walked back into the house, I stayed behind, calming my racing heart. The battle lines were clear, and I had to be ready for what Megan had planned next. Preparations for the wedding took over our lives— Every weekend was packed with visits to floral shops, cake tastings, and fittings. I tried to help where I could, but Megan's constant presence made it unbearable. One afternoon I was at the bridal shop with Mom and Megan. While Megan was trying on dresses, Mom whispered to me, She's really something, isn't she? I forced a smile. She's definitely something. Megan stepped out of the dressing room in yet another gown, fishing for compliments. What do you think, Jennifer? It's nice, I managed through gritted teeth by trying to keep my voice neutral. Megan gave me a knowing look before turning to Mom, who lavished her with praise. She looks like a princess, doesn't she? She does, Mom agreed, her eyes shining with approval. 
After the fitting, we headed to lunch. As soon as we sat down, Megan wasted no time. Jennifer, there's something I need to discuss with you. Alone. Mom's eyes flicked between us, sensing the tension. I'll go order our drinks, she said, leaving us at the table. Megan leaned forward, her expression turning icy. Listen closely, Jennifer. I don't want you at the wedding. I felt my stomach drop. What? You heard me. It'll be better for everyone if you stay away. You've got to be kidding me, I whispered furiously. Brett will never agree to that. You let me worry about Brett. He'll understand when I explain that it's for the best. Megan said, her smile unfaltering, but her eyes hard as stone. I leaned in, matching her intensity. You're trying to cut me out, isolate Brett from his own sister. Why? She smirked. Because drama at weddings is such a cliché. I prefer things running smoothly. You're a troublemaker, Jennifer. I clenched my fists under the table. You can't just erase me from his life. Can't I? Megan raised an eyebrow, challenging me. You're already doing a great job of it yourself, making everything about your issues. It's Brett's wedding, not your redemption story. You're a piece of work, Megan, I muttered, desperate to keep my anger in check. But I'm not going anywhere. We'll see about that, she said, her tone dripping with self-assuredness. Mom returned with our drinks, blissfully unaware of the hostile exchange. Megan immediately flipped the switch, turning back into the charming bride-to-be she presented to everyone. With every passing day, Megan upped her game, subtly but effectively, painting me as the villain in Brett's eyes. Every time I tried to talk to him, she was there, deflecting and diverting. One night, Brett and I sat on the porch, enjoying a rare moment alone. Brett, are you sure about Megan? I asked cautiously. He sighed, looking weary. Jennifer, she's my fiancé. I wish you'd give her a chance. I'm trying, but she's making it impossible. She doesn't want me at the wedding, Brett. His head snapped up. What? She wouldn't say that. She did. She wants to keep me away, I insisted. He looked pained. I'll talk to her. There has to be a misunderstanding. There's no misunderstanding. She's manipulating you, I said, frustration seeping into my voice. Just... Let me handle it, okay, he said, his voice tired. I nodded, though my heart was heavy. The battle lines were drawn deeper than I'd imagined. As the wedding day loomed closer, the stakes couldn't be higher. When the day finally arrived, I stood at the brink of the ceremony, watching as guests took their seats. My place was on the outside, just as Megan had orchestrated. Brett caught my eye from across the lawn, his gaze conflicted. Megan, in all her bridal glory, glided down the aisle towards my brother, sealing what felt like my exile. The moment was bittersweet, and Megan's triumphant smile promised more trouble ahead. The day after the wedding, I found myself numb, replaying the events in my head. That's when Brett called. Jennifer, I need to talk to you. Mind if I stop by? I agreed, curiosity gnawing at me. When he arrived, there was a tension in his eyes that hadn't been there before. I need you to listen, Brett began, sitting down at the kitchen table. An old friend reached out to me, Alexander. My heart skipped at that name. Alex? From high school? Yeah, he said he had stuff to tell me about Megan. I leaned forward, my pulse quickening. What did he say? Brett pulled out a folder, looking more serious than I'd ever seen him. Megan's been hiding things. He showed me some old documents, emails. He handed me the folder. As I flipped through it, my eyes widened. These were records of past business deals Megan had sabotaged, personal transactions that showed deceit and manipulation. This, this is serious, Brett, I said, unable to tear my eyes from the pages. It gets worse, Brett said grimly. She was using her position to ruin competitors, taking them out one by one, and Alexander discovered she's been trying to do the same to my business. My blood boiled. I knew she was no good, but this, this is unforgivable. Brett's face was a mix of anger and hurt. I confronted her. She denied it at first, but when I showed her the evidence, she didn't even try to hide the malicious intent anymore. What did she say? She just smirked and said, You really think you can do better than me? She's been playing us all. We sat in silence, the gravity of the situation sinking in. You have to get her out of your life, Brett. This is too much. Brett nodded slowly. I told her I wanted a divorce. She didn't take it well. I need to take this to Mom and Dad. They need to know. On the drive to our parents' house, I could feel the tension rising. When we arrived, Mom and Dad were surprised to see us but let us in without question. What's going on? 
Dad asked, concern etched into his face. Brett took a deep breath. Mom, Dad, there's something you need to know about Megan. He laid it all out. Alexander's findings, the evidence, Megan's true colors. Our parents listened in stunned silence, their faces paling with each revelation. When Brett finally finished, Mom shook her head, her eyes filling with tears. How could she do this? We need to distance ourselves from her, Dad said firmly. This family comes first. Just then, Megan burst through the door. What the hell is this? She snapped, her eyes blazing with fury. Brett stepped forward. It's over, Megan. We know everything. Her gaze flicked to each of us, realizing the united front she was facing. You think you can just get rid of me that easily? Her voice was venomous. Yes, Brett said, his voice unwavering. Leave. Now. Megan's face twisted in anger, but she held her head high. This isn't over. You'll regret this. She stormed out, slamming the door behind her. The room was engulfed in strained silence. Mom finally spoke, her voice shaking. Thank God you found out now, Brett. We'll get through this, Brett said, looking each of us in the eyes, but we need to stick together. As Megan's car sped away, I felt a sense of relief mixed with dread. The battle was far from over, but for now— we had to rebuild what Megan had almost destroyed. A few days after Megan's dramatic exit, I dove deeper into researching her background. Brett needed every piece of evidence to protect his business. One morning, as I sat at the kitchen table poring over documents, my phone buzzed. It was Thomas, Brett's business partner. Jennifer, something's not right, he said, his voice heavy with concern. What do you mean? I asked, instantly alert. Deals that should have gone through fell apart for no clear reason. I started digging and found connections to Megan. My heart raced. I need you to come over. Bring everything you've got. Within an hour, Thomas arrived, his face grim. I compiled a list of failed negotiations and traced them back to Megan. She's been sabotaging us for months. She's been doing more than that, I said, showing him the files Alexander had provided. She's lying, manipulating, and ruining lives. We sat down with Brett, laying out the extent of Megan's deceit. She's been playing long games, Brett. It's all here, Thomas said. Brett rubbed his face, exhaustion lining his features. This has to go public. People need to know the truth. Just then, the doorbell rang. It was Megan. She pushed past Brett, her eyes wild. You're trying to destroy me, she spat, glaring at me. You did this to yourself, Megan, Brett said coldly. We have proof of everything. She snorted. Proof? Against me? I'll find a way out. Not this time, I said, stepping forward. You can't keep getting away with hurting people. She turned to Brett, her voice dripping with scorn. You think anyone will believe your story over mine? I'll ruin you. Brett stood firm. We're ready for whatever you throw at us. It's over. Megan's face contorted with rage. You'll pay for this, all of you. She spun on her heel and stormed out. After she left, I knew we couldn't wait. Brett, you need to go public now. We called a meeting with Brett's team. We need to expose Megan's schemes, everything, Brett said, his voice steady but fierce. Thomas stepped up with the evidence. Here's what we've got. This has to go out today. By the end of the day, the business world buzzed with the news of Megan's deceit. Press releases, statements, and interviews started pouring in. Megan's carefully crafted facade crumbled rapidly under the weight of her exposed lies. That evening, Brett called a family meeting. We did it. She can't hurt us anymore. Mom hugged him tightly. I'm so proud of you. Dad nodded. It's about time people know who she really is. As we sat together, I glanced at Brett. You did the right thing. I couldn't have done it without you, he said, a small smile breaking through his tired eyes. Just when we thought the storm had passed, Alexander walked in with urgent news. Megan's still trying to play dirty. She's appealing to her influential circles, trying to drag you down. Brett's jaw tightened. We'll fight her every step of the way. The battle wasn't completely over, but we were ready to face whatever Megan threw at us next. United, we were strong. Megan's hold on our lives had weakened, but her fight wasn't finished. We had to stay vigilant, knowing she wouldn't go down without a fight. The war against her manipulations had just entered a new phase, but we were more prepared than ever to protect our family and each other. A week after we exposed Megan, the house still felt tense, like waiting for a storm to hit. Brett was working late every night, trying to repair the damage Megan had done. One evening, as I grabbed a cup of coffee, my phone buzzed. 
It was a message from Alexander, urgent, meeting at the office. Now. My heart pounded as I drove to Brett's office. When I arrived, Alexander was waiting, pacing the room. Brett's almost finished his meeting. We need to talk as soon as he's out. Moments later, Brett walked in, looking exhausted but determined. What's going on? he asked. Alexander got straight to the point. Megan's desperate. She's reaching out to her influential family members, trying to sway them to her side and discredit you. Brett frowned. What's her angle? She's using her Aunt Sarah, who's got considerable influence, to twist the narrative. They're painting you as the manipulative one, Alexander explained. We need to get ahead of this, Brett said, irritation flashing in his eyes. We can't let her win. Suddenly, the door burst open, and Thomas barged in. Guys, Megan's calling a press conference. She's going to tell lies about you, Brett, about us all. I clenched my fists. We need to counteract this. We'll do our own press conference. Get everything out in the open. Brett nodded. Let's go live. Now. Within the hour, the office was buzzing with activity. Cameras were set up, and Brett stood in front of the media. Thank you all for coming on such short notice, Brett started, his voice steady. Today is about setting the record straight. He laid out Megan's deceitful past, presenting the irrefutable evidence Alexander had gathered. Thomas and I stood beside Brett, supporting him as he exposed Megan's manipulation and lies. After Brett finished, a reporter asked, Why didn't you see this sooner? Brett sighed, looking directly into the camera. Sometimes you want to believe in the best in people, but when they show you their true colors, you have to face reality and take action. The reaction was immediate. The media swarmed with the news of Megan's manipulations and Brett's bravery in uncovering the truth. As we wrapped up, Brett's phone rang. It was Sarah, Megan's aunt. He put it on speaker. Brett, I've seen everything. Megan called me, but I didn't know about any of this. I'm so sorry. Sarah's voice was strained but sincere. Thank you, Sarah, Brett said. We need to move forward. Count me in. Megan's actions were unforgivable, and she needs to face the consequences, Sarah affirmed. When the call ended, Brett sighed with relief. One less ally for Megan. We left the office, exhausted but hopeful. For the first time in weeks, there was a sense of closure. Later that evening, as we gathered at Mom and Dad's house, the atmosphere was lighter. The weight of Megan's deceit had been lifted. Dad raised his glass, to family and to standing together. We all raised our glasses, clinking them in solidarity. To family, we echoed. As the night wore on, Laughter and stories filled the room. Brett leaned over to me, wearing a small, genuine smile. We did it. I nodded, feeling a deep sense of triumph. Megan's plans had fallen apart, her facade destroyed. Brett's bold stance and our united front had turned the tide. But the fight wasn't fully over. The aftershocks of Megan's actions would take time to settle, but for now, we relished this victory, knowing we were stronger together. And as I looked around at my family, I knew we'd face whatever came next, united and unbroken. The battle had scarred us, but it had also shown us the true strength of our bond. Megan's downfall was just the beginning of our healing journey. Days turned into weeks, and the chaos Megan had stirred began to settle. Our family fell into a new rhythm, trying to pick up the pieces and move forward. I threw myself into work at the clinic, finding solace in the routine. One evening, as I was closing up, Brett walked in. Hey, got a minute? he asked. Sure, I replied. Putting down the file I was holding, Brett took a deep breath. I've been thinking a lot about everything that happened. It's been a rough ride, but I've learned learned a lot. About trust, about people, about myself. I nodded, giving him my full attention. It's been a learning experience for all of us. I just wanted to thank you, Jennifer, for everything. Without you, I might have been too blind to see the truth about Megan. I smiled softly. We're family. We look out for each other. As Brett left, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. The darkness Megan had brought into our lives was finally clearing, replaced by a new sense of hope and resilience. A few months later, our family gathered for a barbecue at Mom and Dad's. The air was filled with laughter, the scent of grilled food, and a renewed sense of unity. Kelsey tossed a football with Brett while Mom and Dad prepared the food. Jennifer, can you check on the potato salad? Mom called from the grill. On it, I replied, heading to the kitchen. As I stirred the salad, Dad walked in. Proud of you, kiddo. You've handled this whole mess with a lot of strength. 
Thanks, Dad, I said, feeling my heart swell with pride. Dad nodded, his eyes twinkling. And I think you deserve a break. Take some time off. Maybe travel. You've earned it. I'll think about it, I said, smiling. A break did sound appealing. Back outside, Brett was deep in conversation with Thomas about new business ideas. The office had bounced back quickly, stronger and more unified than before. Thomas waved me over. Jennifer, Brett and I were talking about expanding our operations. We'd love your insight, he said. Sure, I said, joining the conversation. We discussed plans, ideas flowing freely, the cloud Megan had cast completely lifted. As the night fell, we all sat around the fire pit sharing stories and laughter. Brett raised a toast. To resilience, to truth, and to family. We all clinked our glasses, echoing Brett's words. To family. In the quiet moments that followed, I realized just how far we had come. Megan's attempts to break us had only made us stronger. Our bonds had been tested but held firm, a testament to our enduring love and commitment to each other. The family had faced betrayal and deceit, but we emerged stronger, united by the trials we had overcome. Megan's downfall was a victory, but the real triumph was in how we grew closer, valuing each other more deeply than ever. Life moved on, and we with it, carrying the lessons learned from this tumultuous chapter. The future looked brighter, filled with promise, and the unbreakable strength of a family that had weathered the storm together.